Welcome to a brand new episode of Law and Batting Order. I'm your host, Tony Oyacostas. Here are some quick hits from the past week. London is home to Big Ben, London Bridge, and Fish and Chips. And as of Friday, London will temporarily be home to the 2012 Summer Olympics. The opening ceremony started off in a grandiose manner as British director Danny Boyle produced a fantastic opening that featured the Queen, James Bond, and Mr. Bean. After a stellar performance, the cauldron was lit center stage, marking the commencement of the Summer Olympics. At least here in the United States, the big headlines will be whether or not Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps will escape with more gold medals and become the winningest Olympian ever. Also, the U.S. basketball team will be competing for gold once again after they've made numerous remarks in the weeks prior that they could beat the 1992 Dream Team. This will certainly be an exciting Olympic tournament, so let the games begin! Action has officially been taken against Penn State University regarding the school's involvement in the Jerry Sandusky scandal. On Monday, NCAA President Mark Emmert laid down a series of sanctions that many believe will cripple the school's football program for years to come. President Emmert announced that the sanctions include a $60 million fine, which is the equivalent of one year's worth of revenue for Penn State's football program, a four-year ban from all postseason activity, four-year scholarship reductions, and the placement of an academic integrity monitor in the school's program. The biggest sanction to take note of is that the NCAA will vacate all of Joe Paterno's wins between 1998 and 2011, thus revoking his title as the most successful football coach in NCAA history. Penn State consented to this punishment, and the school also took action on their own grounds as they removed the statue of Joe Paterno outside of Beaver Stadium. We have about one month left of summer which means that we're one month closer to the start of the football season. This past week marked the opening of training camp for all 32 NFL teams. This is significant because last year's football lockout barred all teams from all training camp and preseason activities. The headlines going into this year's training camp include the New York Jets' quarterback circus starring Tim Tebow and Mark Sanchez, the debut of Peyton Manning as a Bronco, and the reunion of quarterback Jay Cutler and wide receiver Brandon Marshall in Chicago. Today's Order in the Court will cover a disability law issue that has entered the sports spectrum recently. A story was reported here in New York regarding a young boy named Evan Sussman, who was a member of a Little League team in Brewster, New York. Evan suffers from cerebral palsy and is bound to a wheelchair, but this has not hampered Evan's ability to partake in his team's activities. Evan has supported his teammates by sitting in the dugout for the past three years. However, Little League International recently took action and banned Evan from sitting with his teammates, stating that in order to sit in a team dugout, the player must be a member of the roster and must have performed at least 60% of team activities. This ban, however, was lifted. Evan threw the ceremonial first pitch in his game back with the Brewsters this past Wednesday and has reclaimed his spot in the dugout. While this story turned out for the better, it has several implications of disability discrimination. And my hunch is that Little League International allowed Evan Sussman back in the dugout after they realized that they violated the Americans with Disabilities Act. For today's episode, I'll discuss how Evan Sussman's ban from the Brewster Little League team was indeed a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. First, let's take a look at the language of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA for short, regarding what a disability is. According to 42 U.S.C. section 12102, the term disability means a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities of such individual, a record of such an impairment, or being regarded as having such an impairment. Here, Evans' disability is cerebral palsy, which has hindered his ability to communicate clearly and has bound him to a wheelchair. Cerebral palsy is recognized as a valid disability under this circumstance. Now, this situation involves Little League International, which is a private entity. Under Section 12182A, no individual shall be discriminated against on the basis of a disability in the full and equal enjoyment of the goods, services, facilities, privileges, advantages, or accommodations of any place or public accommodation by any person who owns, leases, or leases to, or operates a place of public accommodation. A public accommodation could include a ballpark that allows a Little League team to partake in baseball activities. Section 12182B2A sets out forms of discrimination, and in relevant part, discrimination includes a failure to make reasonable modifications in policies, practices, or procedures when such modifications are necessary to afford such goods, services, facilities, privileges, advantages, or accommodations to individuals with disabilities. A case that directly relates to Evan Sussman's case is Anderson v. Little League Baseball. 
This case, which was heard in Arizona, dealt with a Little League Baseball coach who was bound to a wheelchair. According to the coach, Little League Baseball instituted a policy that bans coaches in wheelchairs from coaching on field. He had been an on-base coach three years prior and local Little League officials refused to enforce this policy against Anderson. While local Little League officials didn't take action, Little League International threatened to revoke charters and tournament privileges from Anderson's team. Anderson argued that this policy was a violation of the ADA. The district court in Arizona held that this policy was in fact a violation of the ADA and made the following holding. The court gives great weight to the fact that plaintiff has served as a Little League coach at either first base or third base for three years without incident. Moreover, plaintiff's significant contributions of time, energy, enthusiasm, and personal example benefit the numerous children who participate in Little League activities as well as the community at large. Plaintiff's work with young people teaches them the importance of focusing on the strengths of others and helping them rise to overcome their personal challenges. Based on Anderson vs. Little League, we see a sharp similarity to Evan Sussman. Little League's actions to ban Evan Sussman from being in his team's dugout hindered his ability to have fun and enjoy the privileges of being a part of this team. While the letter of Little League International's law states that Evan must partake in at least 60% of team activities, Little League failed to make an exception in the first place for Evan. While Evan was allowed back in the dugout, it remains to be seen whether or not Evan's parents could potentially sue Little League International for disability discrimination. In my opinion, a lawsuit is unlikely since Little League International reversed its decision. However, expect to see a revision in Little League's rules to accommodate and allow the participation of the disabled in Little League activities in years to come. And this is how disability law applies to the case of Evan Sussman. Before I wrap up today's episode, I'd like to announce a quick and important programming note. I will be revising Law and Batting Order's schedule. So from here on out, I will be uploading a new episode of Law and Batting Order every second and fourth Sunday of the month. The content of the show will remain the same, but it'll just be every two weeks. Anyway, if that's the show. Leave all your comments down below. And be sure to visit Law and Batting Order at lawandbattingorder.com, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Take care, guys.